Next up, my next interviewee now is with me. Um, we have a catch-up interview with Matt Halubowski. Um, joining me now, how are we doing, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Good to hear that. And I have another new single from you just received. It is called uh, Fall In You Some, which is doing the rounds at the moment. Uh, can you just tell me, and my listener, um, what the story is behind uh, this new record? Uh, yeah, so the new record in a nutshell is um, it, it all came from this image that I had of um, a flower growing out of molten lava. <laughs> so it's a, a dream that I had uh, of a mountain or a volcano rather uh, in Guatemala called Acatenango that I climbed w- uh, back in 2017, or rather I climbed the the adjacent uh, volcano. And uh, in my dream, I, w- I was on the actual uh, active volcano and I had this this ludicrous image of a flower growing out of molten lava and i thought that was quite beautiful and so the this uh the, the sort of uh satire of uh you know life and absurd images is something that i've i've been delving into a lot <laughs> in my life in the last couple of years and so fooling you some as a single is one that is a little bit of a satire on um sort of uh, i guess in a very direct way cults uh but in a more indirect way uh just the the you know general organizations or uh, trends or threads that people follow uh, a little bit blindly sometimes, mm. um, and and so I guess fooling you some is kind of a uh, a critique on that, and you know relating it back to myself, it's a little bit of a you know uh, what you see is not necessarily what you get <laughs> when it comes to uh, you know the artist and what they present uh, in terms of songs and and, and ideas. Yeah. And uh, does this new record fall in your sum? Does it actually fall into a particular genre or umbrella, or is it just your your own unique style? I don't know. I've always struggled to find a, a category for the music that I I make. Uh, it's part folk, it's part rock, it's part, part alternative, it's part ambient. Uh, it really depends on the song. Fooling your sum is a little bit more of a joyous uh, song, um, but that's kind of it was sort of meant to be a little tongue in cheek. So uh, the idea is is sort of a you know the idea of like having a cult like uh, following a, a cult quite literally means that you have to have some form of blissful ignorance and uh and so fooling you some is sort of like this jolly happy uh, breather of a song within a, a, a heavier record a more intense record so it's it's sort of a yeah it's a little bit of a a moment of bliss, of pure bliss, and and a little bit of ignorance at the same time. And I understand nature uh, plays a, a massive part of your life. Um, your uh, last album did have a botanical theme to it, like a the garden versus mower song, and my burrow as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I spent uh, much of my life. I uh, grew up in uh, the countryside, and uh, I've I've spent most of my life chasing uh, various sceneries, you know, mountains and uh, landscapes and and, and lakes and uh, rivers and oceans and uh, I, I really enjoy uh i'm just headed out to devon actually now uh and and i'm gonna go go see some cliffs and go see some nature so it's it's something that's always been a part of my life and and it just uh necessarily finds its way into into songs very nice and you mentioned devon in north devon there's a place called barnstable which you are playing on saturday the, the july the 8th that's one of your shows and then um, you're doing uh, the South Coast here in the UK, a place called Bournemouth at the Anvil, which is Friday the 7th of July. So a few shows. What do you enjoy about uh, performing this side of the, the pond, uh, UK and Europe? Um, I feel like um, the UK has been largely the, the area that's been the most responsive to my music in general. I think, uh, you know, you, you guys have the... Uh, the roots of, of folk music and alternative and rock music uh, for me, like the, the the British have sort of, you know, created it and conquered the world of that music. So for me to come here, feels quite natural. Um, it, it feels a little bit like home mm. to some extent. Uh, so I really love uh, traveling around here. I've never been uh, to Devon. I think the farthest out west I've been to was probably Bath um, that I've, I've been to a few times. Um, but yeah, I've never made my way all the way uh, to the West. Mm. Um, my next question I'm going to ask for you, for you now. I understand you speak a few languages. You're, you're, you're bilingual. Um, do you like to write in um, English or do you like to mix up a bit, you know, singing, you know, um, other languages as well in your music? Uh, well, I sing a little bit in French. Uh, I have a couple of French songs. I have one on this record. Uh, I, I grew up uh, in a bilingual household, so my mother is francophone and my father is anglophone. 
which is a you know fairly common thing out in Canada. I know, in, I mean, in Europe, maybe less so the UK, but in, in most of Europe, people speak uh, at least two languages, if, if not more. Um, so uh, the the province that I'm from in uh, in Canada, Quebec, is largely francophone, uh, but Montreal, its main city, is is quite bilingual. Uh, so I grew up in both, and and uh, you know I write in whatever language comes out naturally. I guess like you know if you you know a songwriter sits down and they're feeling angry one day, they'll write an angry song, or if they're feeling sad, they'll write a sad song. And for me, uh, because my mind sort of oscillates between French and English. Uh, if I sit down and I, I happen to be thinking in, in French in the, in the moment, then I'll, I'll, I'll write in French and, or in English. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of like an interchangeable thing. For, it's just a mode of communication, yeah. really. Sure. Um, my next question um, is this. Uh, what do you wish for uh, in your audience to get from listening to your music? Oh my! I don't know. Liberation. Mm. Let's let's go that far. Um, I, I, for me, music has always been a form of really intense and uh, important catharsis. Um, I feel like I've released a lot of uh, maybe negative or maybe just intense emotions that have been sort of uh, soothed by uh, by music. And so, if I can have that effect on people, uh, then that I've, I've succeeded, I guess. And final question, what's next for uh, Matt Halubowski and, and your band um, for the remainder of the year and going into 2024? So we're, uh, I'm actually headed, uh, so I have these two last shows in the UK and then I'm headed back to France for one more uh, festival before heading back. But this summer is uh, a, a little quiet, so I get to go home and I'm going to start working on some new music already. And uh, in the fall, we continue the tour for, for this record, Like Flowers on a Molten Lawn. And we'll, we're working on coming back to the UK uh, in the late fall. So uh, uh, stand by for that. We'll be announcing some dates soon. Uh, we already have a potential London date. Um, and I'd love to start traveling a little bit more extensively around the UK. Uh, if not starting this fall, then early uh, 2024. Well, marvellous. Thank you very much for taking time out to, to join me today, uh, Matt. Uh, all the best with these shows uh, this weekend. And uh, we'll keep in touch with uh, with your progress and uh, update. keep us updated as well, what you're up to. All right. And we'll get your new Thank track. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the you're time. You're welcome. We'll get your new track played now.